don't learn this algorithm again okay don't don't do this because at the end of the day just learning a data structure or learning an algorithm is not enough you must learn how to apply it now i'm very sure you must have seen these very famous tigers sd sheet uh, love birds 450 questions a problem with these sheets is that people have started you know memorizing them people have started memorizing that new programming ideas Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Priyan Chagarwal. In this video, I'm going to tell you how you can develop your logic and your problem solving skills when it comes to competitive programming, learning DSA or coding in general. So before I get started, let me also tell you, becoming a better problem solver or having very good logical you know, mind takes up a lot of time. It is not like learning a particular algorithm or a data structure. It is a long-term process. You have to go through a lot of problem solving to actually build it. But in this video, I'm going to tell you seven actionable points that you can implement in your journey to make this process much, much faster, right? So without any further ado, let's get started with this video. So the very first actionable point that I have for all of you is to embrace failure and to, you know, let go of the ego. Let me break that down for you. Consider two scenarios. Let's consider you practicing. And in the first scenario, you're able to solve the problem very, very easily. Now in the second scenario, you are not able to solve the problem. You are stuck on the problem for 30 to 45 minutes. And then at the end, you get to know that there was a certain technique that you did not know about. You're practicing to learn more techniques. You're practicing to learn more concepts and to, you know, become a better problem solver. If you're always going to, you know, uh, succeed at solving problems, then you're not essentially learning anything. You're just applying things that you've already learned. Now, I'm pretty sure you all must remember the, you know, famous ad by one of the washing powder companies. And they used to say, Daag achhe hai. Daag achhe hai. That is exactly what I'm going to tell you. Feeling is good. So the second actionable point that I have for all of you is to develop the right mindset when you're approaching a problem. Let me again break that down for you. Let's suppose you look at a coding problem. A lot of people, what they do is when they're reading a problem statement, they start thinking about the data structures or the algorithms that they would like to apply in this problem. This is a very, very wrong way to think about a problem. What you should do instead, list down the observations from the problem statement. You might get a lot of observations and then start thinking about the results that you can get from these observations. For example, you might realize that, okay, the answer cannot be bigger than 10 to the power 5 and the function of the answer looks like monotonic. Then that is the time when you should think about, let's say applying binary search in that problem right let's suppose you look at a problem statement you list down the observations and you break the problem statement into five chunks when you look at a chunk forget about all the rest of the chunks and start thinking about the requirements in this one particular chunk. let's suppose in that one particular chunk you realize that okay the function is monotonic and i can do a binary search then okay that chunk is solved move to the next chunk. let's say you realize that okay this is based on range queries you have to get let's say the range minimum in an array Okay, I can apply segment trees or I can apply sparse tables. Okay, second chunk solved. And this is how you should proceed. Not by just looking at the problem statement and thinking about one generic data structure to apply or one generic algorithm to apply. The next thing that I want to address is the point of forgetting things. A lot of times people come up to me and they tell me, Priyanj, we learned this algorithm long back and now when we're having to apply it, we are not able to, you know, progress. We are not able to get any hints. So let me tell you why this actually happens. A lot of times people learn certain algorithms or certain techniques, but they don't apply them. They don't understand its application. They just understand that the algorithm works like this. So let me tell you how you should actually be revising concepts. So when you learn an algorithm, the very first thing that you should do is to solve a new problem on it. Solve a problem which is not maybe like a direct application of this algorithm, but requires you to think and then decide how this algorithm is going to be applied. So whenever you feel that, you know, a certain algorithm or a certain technique, you are not able to remember or you're forgetting, just apply it in a problem. Don't learn this algorithm again, okay? Don't, don't do this. Because at the end of the day, just learning a data structure or learning an algorithm is not enough. You must learn how to apply it, right? So your revision strategy should not be to revise the algorithm, but your revision strategy should be to apply the algorithm. The next point that I have for all of you is to use the black box strategy. Now assume a black box, you given some input to this black box and it gives you the right result with some logic. For example, you might have a graph and you might want to, let's say, uh, find out the shortest path from one node to every single node in this graph. Now clearly there is a very famous algorithm called Dijkstra which is available for it. So what you can do is you can say that my black box is using the Dijkstra's algorithm. I will provide in the graph, I will provide in the source vertex. And at the output, I will get in the shortest path to every single node. So this is like saying that I might not know how Dijkstra works, but since Dijkstra is implemented in this black box, this black box is bound to give me the right result. So when it comes to coding or, you know, competitive programming, a lot of times what is important is the application of the technique and not how the technique is implemented. There are, you know, certain algorithms or certain data structures, which I myself use as black boxes, and I don't even understand how they work. For example, if you look at this famous data structure of Fenwick trees, I have no idea how Fenwick trees work at the backend, but I know 
that there is this particular type of query that they can handle in big O of login time. So whenever I have, you know, this requirement of handling a query in big O of login time and it meets my requirements, I just use the Fenwick tree as a black box. I never try to understand how it is working at the back end. So there are certain data structures which uh, remain more sort of constant and you don't have to tweak them a lot. So in that case, you can use them as black boxes. And instead of, you know, getting obsessed about how they work, you should be obsessed about where to apply them and what is their application. Let's suppose you have a very big problem and it has certain small, small sub problems. When you use the black box strategy, you, you know, assume that this smaller sub problem will be solved using this black box. So you stop caring about that sub problem. For example, if a problem has five sub problems, if you know that three of these can be solved using some three black boxes, then you direct all your thinking towards the two sub problems, which you don't have much idea about, right? So this helps you focus on more important stuff and, uh, you know, helps you abstract out the less important stuff. Now that we've talked about four actionable points that you can use to build your logic, uh, let's talk about how do you build your intuition? What is intuition? Intuition is a gut feeling that you get whenever you read a problem statement. For example, if you're reading a problem statement and you realize that, okay, the answer can never be bigger than 10 to the power five. Then this is a gut feeling that you're getting. You don't know whether this is correct or whether this is wrong, but you just feel like that the answer can never be bigger than 10 to the power five. How do you get this intuition? First of all, you almost never think about your intuition consciously. It just automatically comes to you. So it might come with, because you know, you have a lot of experience with problem solving. You would have seen similar problems in the past. Whenever you get any intuition or any insight, the first thing that you must do is to prove that idea. Now I'm not asking you to formally prove it, but you know, just listing down certain reasons why this works is going to help you a lot. Let me tell you why this is important. See, if your subconscious mind is telling you an intuition or you know, some idea and you directly quote it, your subconscious mind is always going to think that whatever I'm going to tell this person, this person is going to assume. But when you start proving these ideas, your subconscious mind is getting trained in a manner that, okay, whatever results I'm giving, they will also be tested by this person. He's not going to directly use them. So I need to work a little more to give him the right results. Another thing that I want to tell you is that your subconscious mind works more on emotions rather than, you know, rationality. So if you are, let's say, solving a problem and you get some intuition, you apply it and you get a right result. What you can do is you can reward yourself and you can make yourself happy. So being happy is an emotion, right? I know this sounds like a lot of gyan, but this is actually true. When you become happy, you are, you know, you're releasing certain emotions that your subconscious mind is catching. So what it is assuming is that, okay, I am giving this person some intuition. He's able to solve a problem and he's becoming happy. So this is an emotion, right? Also, one more thing that I want to mention is that when you're reading the editorial of any problem, try to focus on getting hints rather than getting the entire solution. Because see, all these intuitive thoughts that you have are sort of like hints, right? So you want to train your mind to giving you more hints rather than giving you the entire solution. Because in most cases, you are never going to be able to think of the entire solution. You're only going to be able to think of small, small, you know, hints. So that is what you should be training your mind for. The next actionable point that I have for all of you is to start mapping common terms and common patterns to solution ideas and algorithms. For example, a very common idea when you look at array-based problems is that if you're talking about sub-arrays, then the problem might be related to sliding window. The problem might be related to two pointers, right? This is one example. Another example could be that when you see smaller constraints in the problems, then these problems are most likely DP or dynamic programming problems. This is a very, very common hint in dynamic programming problems. The constraints, the constraints are usually lower to tell you that, okay, 2D DP might work here, 3D DP might work here. Uh, I think this comes a lot with experience, but just consciously trying to look at common terms, common patterns in the problems will help you a lot. Also, what you can do is whenever you're reading a solution, whenever you, you know, let's say are not able to solve a problem and you're reading the solution of this problem, always try to think of the new problems that it can be applied in. You look at an idea, try to think of similar problems that it can be used in. So what you're doing is you're trying to see that, okay, this solution idea fits into a lot of different problems, which are similar. Uh, again, this is not a point which instantly is going to help you, but in the longer run, after six months, you will have a very big list of, you know, common patterns in your mind, which would be mapped to common solution ideas. The next actionable point that I have for all of you is to prioritize random problem solving over topical problem solving. See, when you're learning a particular topic, for example, dynamic programming, let's suppose you've already solved 10 problems on dynamic programming. If I give you the 11th problem and I tell you that this problem is solvable using dynamic programming, then the half of the work is already done. You don't even have to think about what to apply. You're already thinking about dynamic programming solutions. But this is not what happens when you're solving a new problem, when you're solving a problem in a contest. You have to, first of all, figure out that this is a DP problem. And in most cases, you know, actually figuring out whether the problem is a dynamic programming problem or let's say binary search problem is much, much more difficult 
then actually building on your dynamic programming idea. Now, what you can do here in this scenario is that if you're solving a you know code forces problem, you can disable the tags. What this is going to do is that it is going to train your mind to solve new problems. Now, I'm very sure you must have seen these very famous uh, Strivers SD sheet, uh, Love Burst 450 questions for you know preparing DSA. A problem with these sheets is that people have started you know memorizing them. People have started memorizing dynamic programming ideas, and this never works. Let me tell you why. If you're given a new problem. Let's suppose the interviewer does not give you the same problem. They give you a new problem. Then you have no idea how to figure out which topic has to be applied. Because how did you practice? You always practiced in a topical manner. You picked up the problems from dynamic programming section and then you solved them all. You never solved a random problem which in which you have to figure out that this is a DP problem. And that is the part which most people lack in. So solving these sheets is great, but you must also try to solve random problems. How can you do that? You can do that by giving a lot of contests. Because these are going to be random problems, they are not going to tell you which topics these problems are based on and that is going to be a real test, right? So that is all that I have for all of you for this video. I am very, very sure that after this video, you would have certain actionable points, not just simple Gyan Valley points, but actionable points to implement in your journey and you know become a better problem solver and make this logic building part of your journey much, much faster.